Uh, I would like to just mention because it's, sorry to just jump in there because uh, antibiotics uh, came up and we I think it's worth mentioning that um, because uh, a lot of people think of antibiotics as sort of a wonder drug that's uh, you know hailed by the medical establishment as uh, as some wonderful thing that's uh, saved everyone's life uh, over the years but um, uh, that's not true I mean as we've all pointed out antibiotic means sort of anti-life you know it's a killer and it's designed to kill bacteria uh, which are the good guys in actual fact but what it does do is when it's uh, ingested by the body the body quite rightly recognizes it as toxic and so it wants to get rid of it as quickly as possible so it fires up the endocrine system which is a, a group of ductless glands in the body uh, controls hormones and things um, it fires up the endocrine system to uh, get that toxic out as quickly as possible and in doing so it's sort of whatever the original toxin was that was making you ill from something you've eaten or inhaled gets washed out with it but then the medical establishment claims the victory for antibiotics but um, that's actually not the case when it's looked at and what then tends to happen and even the medical establishment is realizing this overuse of antibiotics <clears throat> if you can imagine uh keep firing up it, like if you did it with your car engine you keep over revving it all the time you're going to cause damage well if you keep over revving the endocrine system by keep feeding it toxic antibiotics you eventually burn it out it doesn't work so well and then uh you get all sorts of other illnesses and um get set in as well but the medical establishment just tell you that uh why the uh, antibiotics, are, antibiotics are not working so well now is that uh, because uh, you've got superbugs that have developed resistance to them but it's, it's again it's not that at all it's just that they've wrecked your endocrine system and so you know it, it, it can't do anything anymore and people have quite serious illnesses leading on from that I just thought I'd mention that because it's it's a big misnomer about antibiotics being sort of uh, a cure-all for all bacterial problems uh, but in actual fact it's not at all in fact it causes more serious problems than it does actually clear things up well, let me Andrew, uh, Andrew being a doctor in the United States that's that's blasphemy <laughs> I mean antibiotics are the number one first thing that everyone gets and they give them a red they'll give them weeks and weeks work you're telling me that this is bad for people absolutely I, mean, I already know the answer uh, Richie, you know, they, uh, if you look at the uh, amount of people that die from infectious disease um, from now and go back all the way in time to when antibiotics were first invented, you'll actually see that there's been no reduction in death from infectious disease since antibiotics were invented. So in other words, that, that's the real proof. If they were really so effective at treating infections, then we would have less people dying from infections since they were invented, but there's no evidence of that. I like, I like a little quote that I came across today, uh, which amused me, but it's very true, where someone had said, if the germ theory was true, there'd no, be no one alive to believe in it. And I, <laughs> I think there's quite a bit, bit of truth in that. So uh, yeah, if the germ theory were true, there'd be no one left alive to be, believe in it. So uh, something to think about. This is one that I wanted to ask you, and I was afraid I was going to forget, and somebody just jogged my memory. I can't find it, but the third leading cause of death in the world is it's from people taking prescriptions. Is that accurate? Did I say that wrong? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's uh, affectionately known as iatrogenesis, which is, <laughs> if I'm going to be uncharitable, it means just <laughs> death by modern medicine, really, uh, death by the medical establishment, yeah. Um, there's been several studies done, uh, particularly in America. I think the Starfield uh, was was one of them. We sort of uh, looked at something like maybe 100, 120,000 people a year in America alone die from this iatrogenesis, which is where the person is taking a prescription drug 
um, under the auspices of the medical establishment. They've taken it in the correct dose and in the correct way, and it's killed them. And 120,000 people roughly die of that every year in the States alone. And of course, you can multiply that out through every country that uh, in the Western world. Um, yeah, absolutely scandalous. And if the media was doing its job properly, uh, they would uh, be creating uh, a big fuss about it. But as we know, they're complicit because, as you rightly say, they're controlled by the same people. So the public never get to hear the truth about these things. There, uh, you know, they, our government collects lots of statistics about health outcomes, right, and cause of death. And right now, you know, they're basically telling us to record every death as a COVID-19 death. But one thing they do not track is they do not follow deaths due to health care. And in fact, uh, they probably misreport most of these because they would, if you were, say, had a certain diagnosis that was serious and then you die related to health care, they would report it as a death related to that health condition, not to the health care. But uh, there's the study that David mentioned uh, where the 120 to 128,000 deaths from prescription drugs a year. But there's also a study from Johns Hopkins uh, looking at what they call medical errors. And they estimated 250,000 people die a year uh, on a, in a year from medical errors, which doesn't include the prescription drugs. So if you add those two together, you get 378,000 uh, deaths a year, and that definitely puts it into the third leading cause of death. But that's not really the end because that doesn't include a lot of things, like it doesn't include deaths from vaccines, it doesn't include deaths from chemotherapy. So there have been other estimates uh, based on looking at additional numbers uh, that have been in the 700 to 1 million or 700,000 to 1 million death a year range, and that would put it as the first or second leading cause of death in the United States. So we're talking about a system that is contributing to the, be one of the top leading causes of death here, the, our healthcare system. And we're totally unaware of that. And you know, as David stated, the mainstream media do not really report uh, on these studies, which they're readily available if you look for them, but you're not gonna find out about them by watching the news or reading the newspaper. You have to know about them and then look for them yourself. But uh, I mean, this is extremely serious. We're saying that healthcare is one of the leading causes of death. So what the heck are we doing with our system? It's particularly bad in the US um, because they they do actually have probably one of the, the main um, uh, healthcare systems that, that do promote a lot of drug use, prescription drug use. Um, so it, it may be slightly worse in the US. I, I don't know what it's like in, in every country around the world, but any country that uses that system that, um, that relies on pharmaceutical, uh, well, modern medicine, pharmaceuticals, uh, will have a similar problem. Absolutely. I find it strange that trying to find this, um, I tried to find this this morning. I only had a couple of coffees in me, but I tried to find this this morning where the third leading cause was what you were just talking about, and it's hard to find. We're, no, you're not, you're not going to find it, Richie, because this is something that they don't want you to know. So you have to you you have to take the studies together and combine them to come up with this analysis on uh, your own. Okay. You know. So I guess I should put out a paper on it, so then you can reference that. But uh, but really, there there are many people that have done this um uh in in various books uh and i can i can give you the link to that but um you know it no matter how you do it it looks it's really bad well yeah. what i was what i was leading up to is that in this day and age even if you did put a paper up it would only take a matter of a week or so until it was removed or rearranged